What's going on guys, Arax here, welcome back to another Monster Hunter World video and the next episode in my Weapon Workshop tutorial series. This is the series where I go over absolutely everything you could possibly want to know about a given weapon, right from the basic moves available to you, all the way up to the main most efficient combos you should be using and some overarching weapon theory. If you guys missed the last episode, then I went over how to use the Hunting Horn, so if you want to check that out, or any of the other Weapon Workshops for that matter, then you can find the complete playlist linked down below. We're now down to the 14th and final guide, saving another one of my favourite weapons to the very end. It's now time to take a look at the Insect Glaive. The Insect Glaive is a weapon of two parts. You have the Glaive, the staff-like component that you perform your attacks with, and the Kinsect, which is your arm-mounted bug companion that will help you gather extracts from the monster in order to gain a variety of buffs. Plus, it can also attack for you too. It's pretty handy like that. Attacks with the Glaive are fast, fluid and relatively long reaching and it behaves a little like a bow staff, so for any Sun Wukong fans, this might be one for you. It also allows you to vault into the air no matter where you're standing, making it an exceptional weapon for mounting monsters and just in general remaining mobile and darting around the map. It's fun, stylish and completely different to any other weapon, so if you're looking for something fresh to try out, then consider checking out the Insect Glaive. Now, before we dive into the moves and explore what this weapon has to offer, there's a few things you need to understand first. As mentioned, this is a weapon of two parts. The glaive portion is pretty self-explanatory. You use it to attack, and we'll go over all the combos very shortly. Meanwhile, the Kinsect, your bug companion, this is the part you need to understand. You can control the Kinsect in combat, command it to fly towards a monster, and upon impact, it'll gather what is known as an extract, an essence from the monster, if you will. You get different extracts depending on the part of the monster that you hit. These extracts can then be consumed when you call the Kinsect back, and in doing so you gain certain buffs from them. These buffs can alter your attack animations, giving you more damaging combos, increase your movement speed and jump height, provide you with knockback resistance, and when combined you can even gain attack and defense boosts on top, so they are an integral part of Insect Glaive play. And while it might sound a little complicated to begin with, having a weapon for combat plus a little companion that you also need to manage, when you get your head around it, it's really quite simple. Once you learn where the different extracts come from, you'll find yourself gathering what you need very quickly at the start of a hunt, and shortly after, you can almost forget about it and focus solely on damage. So, with that in mind, let's take a deeper look. To begin with, I'm going to very quickly go over the basic moves unbuffed. I mentioned that one of the key set buffs offers you enhanced attack animations, and that's realistically what you'll be using 99% of the time. But in the interest of going over everything, let's start here. Pressing triangle three times consecutively will perform your basic triangle combo. Rising slash, reaping slash, double slash. Keep in mind that your triangle attacks are your weaker of the two combo options. You can also press forward and triangle to perform a basic thrust. This jabs forward a little and you can combo from this directly into your basic triangle combo. Alternatively, pressing circle two times consecutively will perform a wide sweep followed by an overhead smash. A nice combo and as you'll see later, once we look at the buffed versions, this will end up being a very important move. You can also press forward and circle for a leaping slash, this covers good ground, so if there's a bit of distance between you and the monster, you can use this as an opener and then lead into your combos. You can also press forward and triangle with your weapon sheath to perform this same attack. Of course you can also combo these moves together, but I'm not going to focus on that for now since most of your combos are going to come from when you have the red buff active, so let's move on to the aerial options. Holding down R2 and pressing X will see you vault into the air. This doesn't require any sort of ledge, you can literally vault from anywhere thanks to the glaive. You can also input a direction with the vault if you want to vault backwards or to the left or to the right. Although if you want to do that, it'll typically need to follow an attack. And also keep in mind that you can work vaults in mid-combo should you need to get out. Following a vault, you can then press triangle for a jumping slash. This does mounting damage, so pair this with your ability to get airborne in any location, and you can begin to see why this weapon is one of the choices for mount spamming. Alternatively, pressing X following a vault will see you do a mid-air dash. This can be used evasively if you want to get out of danger. However, if you press circle after a vault, you'll instead perform a jumping advancing slash. This will see you travel some distance and then perform a swipe in the process. If this final swipe connects with the monster, you'll then be launched back up into the air, at which point you can then input it again or press another one of the aerial options. Keep in mind that the triangle attack brings you back down to the ground, meanwhile the X or circle inputs can be chained, so you can dash to pursue a monster and then perform the circle attack to keep airborne. That being said, there is a limit. These air dashes consume stamina, but even if you have stamina remaining, after you've performed four consecutive jumping advancing slashes, the next one will see you land on the ground regardless of whether you connect with the monster or not. So this does have a finite number of uses, but you can't remain airborne forever, sadly. Moving on from there, let's talk about Kinsect commands. Holding down L2 and pressing triangle will send your Kinsect out to where you're aiming, and then holding L2 and pressing circle will call it back. 
You can also press R2 with your weapon sheath to draw directly into sending your Kinsect out. Now assuming your Kinsect hits the monster when you send it out, you will see in the UI at the top of the screen that it has gathered a buff, this colour here. Then when you call it back, you will consume the gathered extract and add it to the special meter over here. Also keep in mind that the Kinsect has a small stamina bar too, and issuing actions consume that stamina. If it remains out for too long, it'll eventually run out and return to you, but the action of calling back the Kinsect also restores some stamina too. Now with regards to the extract, this is the important bit. Generally speaking, while monsters come in different shapes and sizes, the extract locations are generally pretty similar. Red extract always comes from a monster's head. White extract usually comes from legs or the arms, essentially the component that helps it move. Orange extract typically comes from the more defensive, hard to reach locations like the chest or the back, and green comes from the tail. Although green is a little different, it doesn't go into the little meter, green is just a one-off heal. You call it back in and get a small potion like heal. It's useful, but in truth, it will largely never be your focus. See, the red extract, when consumed, will last for 90 seconds on its own. Keep in mind that the recent weapon patch increased the Kinsec buff duration, so the timers are a little different to when the game first launched. But red buff lasts for 90 seconds alone, and when you have this, you have access to better, more damaging combos. And it's for this reason that I didn't focus on the moves at the beginning for too long, since you ideally want to ensure that you always at least have red buff active when attacking. The white buff lasts for 120 seconds, and this increases your movement speed and jump height, which is pretty handy for getting around. And the orange buff, often the hardest one to grab, this gives you minor knockback resistance and lasts for 150 seconds. Keep in mind, if you've played with Insect Glaive in previous games, the orange buff works a little differently now and no longer provides you with earplugs. However, it doesn't end there. There are also hybrid effects. If you gather red and white extract, you gain the improved attack animations and movement speed buffs from before, plus you now have an 8% attack increase, and this lasts for around 85 seconds. Meanwhile, orange and white, this gives you knockback prevention and the movement speed buff, plus a 10% defense boost, but again, no earplugs. And then finally, if you gather all three, red, white, and orange, aka the triple buff as it's known, this gives you all of the above and the attack boost goes up to 12%. So while the triple buff is, without question, the best option, keep in mind that sometimes the orange buff is hard to grab, depending on the monster. Basil is an example of a really annoying monster to try and grab orange on. So in instances like that, you're sometimes better off grabbing just red and white so you can begin attacking and taking advantage of that 8% damage boost than spending another minute running around trying to grab that triple buff. Also, a pro tip for you, one thing you might genuinely want to consider is opening a fight with red and white, and then when your buff is about to run out, grab orange and it will give you the triple buff and reset the timer, so it basically means less downtime between your damage rotations. Keep in mind that when a buff is about to run out, the icon starts to flash very fast, so that is basically your indicator that your buff is running out. And when it comes to gathering extract, there's two main ways to go about it. As we've already covered, you can manually control your Kinsect to grab what you need, and this is in truth what you'll be doing most of the time, since it's the fastest and most efficient way to do it. However, you can also press L2 and R2 together to fire a tracking mark. This puts a mark on the monster, and your Kinsect will home in on this location. In doing so, not only will it grab the extract, but it'll also continue to dive bomb the location, attacking every few seconds doing damage, and also deploying these dust clouds. It'll continue to do this until you either call it back, or it runs out of stamina. I'll speak about the dust clouds in a moment, but this in itself is pretty handy, since it's additional damage that your Kinsect can dish out while you are attacking. Plus, since Kinsects come in two forms, Sever and Blunt, or Cutting and Impact, then if you set a mark on a monster's head, the Kinsect can systematically build up KO damage and even KO the monster if it hits the threshold. There are also a range of different Kinsects you can have, and we'll take a look at those shortly. You can also press R2 at any point to swing with the back of your glaive and apply a mark like that too. This is handy since you can work this in mid-combo, plus this hit also does impact damage, while the rest of your attacks are cutting, so again, you could KO a monster with this move. But keep in mind the KO values on this are pretty low, but it's still possible. Now returning to speak about those dust clouds for a moment, as mentioned, when the Kinsec strikes a marked location, it leaves behind these clouds. If you or a team member hit them, they'll explode, dishing out the relevant damage. And there are four different dust types. Poison dust, upon exploding, will begin applying the poison status. And once the threshold is hit, much like any weapon, the monster will become poisoned. The same also applies for the paralysis dust, works in the exact same way. Every explosion dishes out paralysis damage. And again, once you hit the threshold, the monster will be paralyzed. Healing Dust turns these little dust clouds into mini potions, so hitting them gives you free heals on the go, which is actually pretty handy, 
given the frequency at which these can be deployed. And finally, you have Blast. This tends to be most people's go-to option. The explosions dish out blast damage, and that's handy for breaking parts and making monsters flinch. So this is for sure something you want to work into your Insect Glaive gameplay. If you begin or end a combo with a quick mark, it means your Kinsect can attack for you whilst you're fighting, and deploy Dust Clouds, which you can simultaneously destroy, to dish out extra damage. And speaking of extra damage, let's now return to talk about those buffed combos. Now that you understand the Kinsect management, and you see that the red buff is something you should aim to maintain at all times, here's what you can do with it when it's active. Your triangle combo is now Strong Rising Slash, Strong Reaping Slash, and Strong Double Slash. There are more hits in the combo now, it attacks fast, and this makes it an exceptional combo for applying abnormal statuses to a monster. Similarly, your forward and triangle attack is now a Strong Thrust. Your circle combo now begins with a strong wide sweep into a tornado slash, and this final hit is one of your most powerful attacks. The final hit in that sweepy attack does very good damage, and while it does somewhere in the combo, it's also going to form a core part of some of your damage rotations. And forward and circle again does the leaping slash, still a great opener, and a way to cover ground should the monster be a little further away. Now there is a nice infinite combo you can do, which is two neutral triangle inputs followed by a circle input. This is the bread and butter infinite combo for the insect leave. And while it is true that the triangle attacks have been nerfed a little bit in world and aren't quite as potent as they used to be, this combo attacks fast and hits multiple times making it a great way to dip into elemental or status damage. As for your aerial moves, your triangle attack after a vault now looks like this, this strong jumping slash it hits multiple times on the way down like a cartwheel and is great for mounting. Your mid-air dash following a vault remains the same, meanwhile the circle input is now a strong jumping advancing slash. Again this hits quite a few times and the final hit does mounting damage and of course also launches you back up into the air. But also the first few hits are yet another good way to apply status effects mid-combat. Now it is worth calling out that while zipping around in the air like some sort of monster hunting Wukong might seem appealing, and it certainly does have its uses, it's also not your best damage dealer. The airborne hits are comparatively quite weak, so while it is handy if you want to mount or perhaps paralyze a monster, if your focus switches to damage, you are far better off dropping back to the ground and dipping into your core combos, since that is where your damage will come from. Also it's worth calling out that when you mount a monster with the insect glaive, as you move around it by inputting different directions, you'll cartwheel down it with your glaive, doing damage, inflicting status ailments if you have them, and you can also cut tails off simply by jumping back and forth, which is pretty handy. Additionally, thanks to the recent weapon patch, your Kinsic buff timer stops when you're mounted, so you don't have to worry about mount time eating away at your valuable buff timer. Now finally, a quick note on aerial moves, if you're sliding down a hill and you press triangle triangle, you'll go into the jumping advancing slash or the strong version if you're buffed, as you should be. If this hit connects, you will then launch back into the air again, and from there you can input the usual options, triangle, X or circle. If you jump off a ledge and press triangle, you'll perform the strong jumping slash, and similarly, if you run up a wall and jump off pressing triangle, you will again perform the strong jumping slash. However, if you perform a vault and then press X to dash into either a runnable wall or simply a climbable surface like vines, you will cling onto the wall like this. You can use this evasively if you need some room to breathe for a moment, but you can also pull back and press either triangle, circle or X to perform a backflip, and from there you can press triangle for the strong jumping slash. Also you can use this to climb up vines too, which is pretty handy. So, with all the moves covered, let's very quickly explain the different Kinsect types. When you go to the smithy, you have the option to nurture Kinsects. Unlike previous games, Kinsects are not tied to your Glaive. You can craft Kinsects and Glaives separately, meaning you're able to pick and choose the one that you want, and it also means you're never bound by one choice. First up, there are two base Kinsects, the Cauldrome and the Maldrome. From here, you can then upgrade or nurture them into various final forms. Any Kinsect in the Cauldrome line is a Sever type or a Cutting type, meanwhile all the Maldrome Kinsects are Blunt or Impact type. You can see the type listed over here on the right. Below that is the dust type, remember that this will vary between poison, paralysis, heal or blast. You also have the element option, and the cool thing about this is that you can change the element from the options at the smithy, but keep in mind that this usually comes at a cost to some of the base stats, so I tend not to bother. Then below that you have the core stats, power, speed and heal. The higher the level the better it is. Power is useful if you want to lean more into the damage portion of your kinsect and heal gives you better quality heal from both extracts and also green dust. But in truth, most people will always go for speed, it makes your kinsect faster, meaning you can grab extracts faster, get your buffs faster, and get back into the fight much quicker. It's for that reason that the Pseudocath 3 ends up being most people's favourite kinsect, it has the highest speed stat, and it has the blast dust effect. But keep in mind, there's no right or wrong choice, sometimes I like to run with the Carnage kinsect since it looks cool and offers blunt damage, but if you're looking for a Kinsect recommendation to at least get you started, then grab this one. So, with all the basics covered, how do we tie it all together? What combo should you be using to do the most damage? 
Well, as mentioned earlier, you have your infinite combo, which is triangle, triangle, circle, repeat. And even though the triangle attacks might not be as potent as they once were, this is still a good damage combo that attacks fast, hits multiple times, making it great for both damage and also status or elements. And keep in mind that while this can be looped, the moment you see the monster about to move and you realize you're gonna lose your opening, work a second circle attack in at the end as a finisher for some good damage. Alternatively, another option is quite simply triangle into circle. While this might not be quite as fluid as the first one and the final circle hit does move you, which often requires repositioning after, the good thing about this combo is that it has a very high stagger value. And it's for that reason that you see it being used quite heavily in Insect Blade speedruns. While the infinite combo on the numbers front is marginally higher, the difference is negligible and the value offered by the potential stagger is much greater. So this is a great move or combo to use. Also an extra tip for you, if you do intend to use this combo, you can somewhat negate the long ending animation by using your Kinsect to cancel the end. If during the circle hit, you face your camera where you want to go and then press L2 and triangle to throw your Kinsect back out, it'll cancel the last bit of the animation and allow you to get back into the fight a little bit quicker. So if this is a combo you want to use, then this is a good way to counteract the forward motion of the final hit and the lengthy animation. So triangle, circle, look where you want to attack, L2 plus triangle to throw out the Kinsect and then repeat. Similarly, you could just drop triangle together and just use the circle combo on loop. The damage isn't quite as high, but again, it ends in that nice, strong finisher. And finally, you can also work the leaping slash in at the beginning if you need to close the gap for some nice opening damage. So leaping slash into the triangle circle combo results in some very nice damage. And again, the strong stagger hit. Now to round things out, let's very quickly go over some handy armor skills you might want to consider when using this weapon. As always, your typical attack focus skills like attack boost, weakness exploit, critical eye, critical boost, agitator, maximum might or even peak performance, those will have value with this weapon. And while you might question the value in something like maximum might, a stamina focused skill, keep in mind that while your airborne attacks consume stamina, your ground based attacks, i.e. where you'll be doing most damage, don't. So you can still take advantage of things like maximum might when on the ground. On top of that, Power Prolonger is a great skill since it extends the duration of your Kinsect buffs, and while it might not be exceptionally difficult to grab new buffs mid-combat, at the end of the day, less time spent gathering is more time spent attacking, so if you can work it in, it is for sure something that can offer great value. Of course, on top of that, the use of elemental focus skills, fire attack, water, ice, dragon, etc. Since your unlimited combo is pretty fast, you can get some value out of exploiting a monster's elemental weakness, and of course, if you're going to be doing that, then the Rathalos set bonus critical element pairs nicely. On the flip side, you also have your abnormal statuses like sleep, paralysis, poison or blast. You can get great value out of these and pair these with your aerial combos. While they might not be big damage moves, they hit a lot, so are great for proccing status effects. And of course, to go with that, you have the Zora Magda set bonus, status crypt. Another option for you if you plan to dart around in the air a lot is constitution. Again, while it's important to keep in mind that you want to remain grounded for hefty damage dealing, there are of course times where airborne combat has value. And in situations like that, constitution can help on the stamina front. Since the Insect Glaive attacks fast, then your usual sharpness focus skills like Protective Polish to prevent your sharpness decreasing for a short time after sharpening, or Razor Sharp, the Zeno Jeeva set bonus to reduce the rate that you lose your weapon sharpness. And of course, Handicraft is nice again if you want to push your Glaive into white sharpness, assuming that it's available. So those are a few skills to get you started. Now, finally, as always, to round out the tutorial, we're going to dive into a complete hunt in the arena to show the weapon being used in combat to try and tie it all together and make sense of everything we've just covered. For this one, we're going to be taking on a high rank pink Rathian, and I'm using my Paralysis Insect Glaive that I picked up from Kulv Taroth. Now, I normally start these hunts by going for the mount, but in this instance, I opted to gather my buffs first. Since the buff timer doesn't decrease when I'm mounted, I'd rather have them ready to go for when Rathian goes down so I can dip into the big damage combos rather than using that downtime to gather. With that done, I take advantage of my aerial abilities to attack Rathian while she's in the air, but in doing so, I pull off my first mount. Now, since I have the Paralysis Glaive, in the process of moving around the body to avoid being thrown off, I paralyze Rathian rather conveniently as she was about to go down, so I end up getting a second opportunity at the mount finisher. Either way, with her down, I'm then going to use the basic triangle circle combo since it's good for damage and also building towards that stagger. Notice how I'm also using the Kinsect trick I mentioned earlier to get back into the combo that little bit quicker. My cat then puts her to sleep. Annoyingly, I forgot my big bombs once again, but since my individual hits aren't especially strong, I just did a quick bomb wake up instead. 
Again, you'll notice that I'm making good use of that triangle circle combo whenever I have openings. The other good thing about this one is that it's quick. While the infinite combo hits more and technically has a tiny bit more damage, it also takes a little bit longer. So for times when my windows are limited, the triangle circle option is great. And again, there's that heavy stagger move at the end. Fast forward a little more and I get another paralysis. So once again, using the same damage rotation. Now notice how in this hunt, I'm remaining largely grounded for a lot of this since my focus here is damage. If I was playing in a team, I would spend a little bit more time airborne to try and get those mounts to help people out. But in this instance, I'm using my airborne skills more so for the old dodge instead. Like here, when she's doing the usual run back and forward, I can then use my dodge to get out of the way. Anyway, fast forward a little more, I worked in a few aerial hits while she was running around and just in general being hard to hit, so I've been slowly working towards the next mount, which then comes through not too long after. Now in this instance, after the basic damage rotation, Raffian gets paralysed again, so I've got a really nice window here for some good damage. But at the end, I'm going to work in a hit with the back of my glaive, that's the R2 hit, to get some blast dust in play. It's also pretty handy since it allows the Kinsect to continue attacking whilst Rathian is flying. I can then use my Vault to leap up and detonate the cloud in the air, and luckily it caused Rathian to flinch, which would have given me a nice opening, but since my buffs ran out, I needed to very quickly gather those again. Anytime she does the fireball attack, I use the leaping slash to close the gap, and it's also pretty nice for flinches too, but soon after that, the fight basically wraps up. So as you can see, despite the aerial abilities this weapon offers, I do still remain grounded a lot of the time. If you want to do the most damage, that's where you'll be. See, your aerial moves more for utility, and your ground-based options as damage. Of course, if you're playing in a team, as mentioned earlier, you might spend a little bit more time in the air to help your team out with mounts and status build up, but obviously that's up to you to decide what makes sense at any given moment. But either way, that's it for my Insect Glaive tutorial, and that's also it for the Weapon Workshop. So I've now covered all 14 weapons. If you guys have missed any of them, then the playlist is linked in the description box down below. Fear not, there is plenty more stuff that I have planned. It means that I can get back to my Monster Guide series, as well as a few other things as well. So maybe those will fill the upcoming weekend voids. But I hope you guys have enjoyed the series. If you did, then a like would be super appreciated. And be sure to comment down below if you have any questions. Thank you very much for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.